Yes, I know, this is probably not the video that Philadelphia Flyers fans want to see right now. Y'all just beat the Calgary Flames, like, two minutes ago at the time of me recording this audio. It was an early game, it was the weird 10 a.m. PST showing, and because Sportsnet West is available to me, I was able to watch this game on my TV screen. But... Instead of focusing on the Calgary Flames' loss at the hands of Philly, I wanted to talk about a different Philadelphia Flyers-related topic. Because this one involves my Vancouver Canucks, and the Canucks are playing later tonight, so I kind of have to get this video out there quickly. Let's talk about the controversy between two of these teams' top prospects at the World Juniors yesterday. We alluded to this in the Team Sweden Loses to Team USA video, but I wanted to expand a little bit more so on this situation as a whole, as well as go over the stone-cold responses given out by some of these prospects. So, our situation is highlighted by two guys, and you already know from the title of the video, but today we're talking about Vancouver Canucks prospect Jonathan Lakaramaki, as well as Philadelphia Flyers prospect Cutter Gauthier. Because after yesterday's gold medal game, where you saw Team USA win, you had yourselves the handshake line, which featured a very interesting interaction with both of these players. They talked about it a little bit on the broadcast, but it was featured in video format. During the handshake line, there actually was a pretty big gap. Because when Jonathan Lakaramaki and Cutter Goche both shook hands, you had yourselves the video footage of Lakaramaki actually stopping and turning around because he was trying to talk to Goche and tell him something. And you could see in the video clip, Lakaramaki kind of shakes his head a little bit. Cutter Goche is talking back to him. He's kind of just responding. And the tweet by Daniel Wagner, which has the video clip, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to see this yourself, says this, Typically, all is forgiven in the handshake line, but it seemed like Lakaramaki still had something to say to Goche after his cross-checks in the final minute. Now, if you didn't see the game, at the very end, there were a lot of shenanigans, lots of bodies going around, lots of punches being thrown. Lane Hudson would add it with a prospect that is so much bigger than him in Albert Johansson. So, Team Sweden and Team USA definitely didn't have much love for each other towards the end of the game. But of course, with the handshake line being the norm and everything, you know, you gotta put it all to the side. Just congratulate the other team on the good game that you played and move on. But Lakaramaki apparently did not do that. And we have ourselves a bigger conversation that has brought itself up in regards to this. So if you wanted to talk about the status of the tournament, let's just say, an interesting thing that a lot of people were talking about with this moment in particular was that the handshake took place after the MVP of the entire tournament was announced. As we know, Jonathan Lakaramaki was given that MVP honor for the entire tournament, and it was a pretty interesting toss-up. Like, you could have said that there were a bunch of other guys that could have gotten it too. I know for one, there were a lot of people kind of upset that Cutter Goche himself didn't get the MVP award. I did see some people asking whether or not, like, oh, Lakaramaki was going after Goche because Goche was ticked off. He didn't get the MVP himself. And, like, I think that's a little bit far-fetched because, you know, I mean, they just won the gold medal. Why would Cutter Goche go out there and be ticked off that he didn't get an individual award, especially considering the comments that Goche made before the gold medal game? Take a look at this. This is stone cold right here. Cutter Goche talked about this on the rivalry with Sweden. They stripped the gold medals from our necks at the U18 Worlds a few years ago. So we're going to give them everything that we've got. And that is such a ballsy comment as well, because it's bringing up the past history. As we had said in yesterday's video, this same squad of Swedes went out there and won the gold medal at the U18s against a lot of these USA players. So for this gold medal in Team USA's favor in 2024, this was just kind of seen as revenge by a lot of these guys. And as we had said, most of them can come back for next year's tournament too, which is going to make this USA team even more scary because they're going to be older, they're going to be more experienced. That's going to be a riot to watch next year. We also had some comments made by Cutter Goche in response to that Lakaramaki incident itself. Here's the comment from J.D. Burke, I just said great game and wished him the best with his career, and for whatever reason, he gave me the cold shoulder. Now, I will say, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, but if I was, if you were to ask me, hey, could you place a bet, like, do you believe that Cutter Goche 100% only told the guy great game, wishing him the best with his career? Would I believe that? I don't know. 
And I'd be a little skeptical. Not because, like, I think Cutter Goche is a bad person or a liar or whatever, but, like, you get how athletes are, right? Especially this American squad that had a bit of an attitude, especially when they were winning, blowing kisses to the crowd and everything. There was a sort of mentality that you could tell was definitely there. These guys liked to have fun, they liked to be a little bit mischievous, and kind of liked to toe the line a little bit in regards to their antics. So, if you told me that Cutter Goche just wished Le Karamaki the best for his career, I would question the tone. Because if Cutter Goche went out and said to Le Karamaki, hey, great game, man, yeah, by the way, good luck with the rest of your career, then that's okay. But if he was like, great game, bud, good luck with the rest of your career. Like, there's a snarky attitude there, and if there was already some bad blood from Le Karamaki with the cross checks and everything, then I could understand why there might have been a little bit of a ruckus there. Here's a reply. In fairness, the dude has just lost gold in front of his home crowd of fans. He's probably not thinking much about the future. Still a little bit rude, but it's understandable. And even more so when you acknowledge the personal feelings that he had. Here's the quote that he made after the game, just stone cold. I'm going to keep on returning to that phrase, stone cold. The Karamaki says this about processing the loss, it's empty. We give it all out there, so it's tough. Can he take some pride in his MVP performance? No, I don't think so. We wanted gold. And just think about that, right? The guy gets the tournament MVP, he is so dominant, he scored a goal in the gold medal game, and he's going out there to the media saying, yeah, I'm still not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. I wanted gold. We wanted gold. This was our goal. And they didn't get it done. So this guy is not talking at all about his own personal accomplishments. He's in it for the team. That kind of indicates the stoicism that Le Karamaki has as a prospect. And so to see that thing with Cutter Goche go down, it's definitely an interesting talking point. J.D. Burke also had this tweet. Le Karamaki didn't have much to say in the encounter. He confirmed that Goche said something, but he wouldn't elaborate on what. And he didn't even get into his own response in the situation. So maybe I'm making mountains out of a molehill here, but I did think it was interesting to bring up that there was some sort of an altercation that did get fans on social media conversing about the status of these two prospects and their interactions on the ice. Now, when it comes to their performances at the tournament, Le Karamaki, as we had said, tournament MVP, 10 points in 7 games played, 7 goals, just an absolute clutch goal scorer, scoring goals when the team needed it most. And Cutter Goche, you could say, definitely did the same thing. He had 2 goals and 12 total points in 7 games, so he had more points than Le Karamaki, but Le Karamaki had much more goals. However, Cutter Goche did score the goal that sent Team USA to the finals in the first place with that beautiful snipe against Team Finland. It's interesting because because Cutter Goche, I feel, was a lot more than a sniper than what he showed off in this tournament. He had a lot of really nice passes, plays where he just controlled the offensive zone, where he would rove around with the puck before making a beautiful pass out in front for the goal. Like, this guy became a playmaker in this year's tournament. And it's not like I'm saying, oh yeah, he's never been a playmaker before. He could never make good plays. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying mostly for Cutter Goche, he's been sort of that power forward sniper on the rush kind of guy. So to see him be able to come into his own more so in a setup role, that's been a pretty good transformation from this tournament. That's not to say that Cutter Goche didn't shoot the puck or whatever. He shot the puck a lot, actually. But it's interesting to see him be able to fall more so into that playmaking role. Le Karamaki, on the other hand, you can see the shots and the quality of the plays that he's going out there providing. He only had three assists, but seven goals on top of that. The guy was a one-timing machine, and he would just unleash pucks on goal with no mercy. That you had yourselves this stat posted by Cam Robinson, shot on goal leaders heading into the final day of the World Junior, so this does not include the final day. Yanni Newman had himself 33 shots in the tournament, Le Karamaki had 30, Kasper Haltunen had 28, Yuri Kulich 26, and Cutter Goche had 24. So, in six games played, Cutter Goche had 24 shots on goal, four shots a game for this guy averaging, and he still only had two goals in the tournament. So it is kind of interesting to note that he was always a goal scorer, I felt, in his NTTP and NCAA days, but in this tournament, he defaulted more so to being that playmaker. That's really interesting. But for the Karamaki, he had just a whole bunch of goals going in, a whole bunch of pucks going his way, so much lethality in that shot. But to see both of these top goal scoring prospects kind of going at it a little bit at the end there, yeah, that's definitely interesting to see. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this entire controversy between two of the top prospects in the NHL right now, Jonathan Karamaki of the Canucks and Cutter Goche of the Philadelphia Flyers. Do you think it was worth making a video about this entire thing? Even if you didn't, I hope you enjoyed this video. And...
Bye.